And then the last component is the revenue component. We spend a lot of time on the revenue component, um, making sure that it's it's auditable. Um, this this program, not not the CalCats version, but the prior version, the the Santa Clara County Daily, actually was audited by CF, CDFA. Um, so it's a ledger-based system, which means for any given business, we keep a full ledger of all the transactions that have happened um, when we go to a party city. The, the transaction, the ledger screen for a business gives you a list of all the transactions that have occurred on their account. And this goes back as far as you have data in CalCats for. So we don't automatically purge data at any point. And what you'll see in here is you'll see invoices, you'll see payments, and you'll see adjustments. Rarely adjustments, mostly just invoices and payments. If I look at this, this is a uh, device registration first invoice. It's the most current uh, invoice for this time period. Uh, it was generated February 26th and so on. You'll see all the details. If I click on a transaction, I'll get a detail window that will tell me how that invoice or how that payment was constructed. So we'll see the, the business, the location it was sent to, and at the bottom we'll see all the devices and all the device calculations that went into it. So the device registration fees, the location fees, you know, fees that were capped and so forth. On that invoice, if they don't pay the invoice, I can generate a second invoice, which will switch to the second invoice template that has the late fee and the, you know, the late payment language. So that's fairly automatic. And I can also uh, revise or delete this invoice. So if I need to revise an invoice, for an example, um, to adjust a, an amount that wasn't calculated correctly or, or something that your sealer just says, hey, we're going to charge this, this differently, um, you can do that through the system. So it's fairly flexible in terms of you know, tailoring things to special cases. I can generate other types of transactions. You'll see across the top, we've got several transaction types. Most useful ones is, this is a general purpose invoice. So if I need to invoice someone, say for a missed taxi appointment, this is just like doing an invoice in QuickBooks. I'll just add you know, invoice items. So I'm gonna charge them for a uh, taxi missed appointment. And there's one of them and the unit cost is 20 bucks and that's their extended cost. And that'll add a $20 taxi missed appointment to the invoice. And if I save this, uh, I can print it out and mail it to them, and it will register another transaction here for that business. So now you'll see they've got a $129 registration invoice, a $20 missed taxi appointment invoice. They owe us $149. We also have a template for re-inspections. You know, if, if place and service fails enough times, at some point you'll probably charge for the re-inspection. We do have a non-commercial invoice template. You can generate the device registration invoices one at a time. And that's useful if you have something odd like, like farms markets or swap meets that you, you deal with a little differently than the normal calculation method. But it's also really useful for businesses where you do a routine inspection to discover they have more devices. So you have to do an incremental uh, registration invoice for them. So you can handle that that way. And then finally payments. So if I uh, take this invoice here, uh, that's 53 dash uh, 2122 12. You can see I can apply a payment, $20 payment date. I can provide receipt number, payment types, all kinds of details, save it. And then you'll see, you know, again, the ledger accumulates all these transactions. So I've got an invoice, an invoice, and then a payment. Okay, and then last thing I'll touch on, obviously for device registration, where you're sending out hundreds, maybe thousands of invoices at the same time, you don't want to do those manually. So we have a batch process that will generate uh, all of those device registration invoices. You can generate uh, invoices, or uh, registration certificates, or some counties actually send the certificates along with the invoice, just assuming everyone will pay. So you can generate both at the same time. <laughs> um, the way this is set up, the calculation is driven by a set of fees that you know follow the you know the DMS publications for fee schedules, and 
sort of we modified to handle some oddities of different counties' ordinances. But it takes into account things like the device registration fee, the fee per end devices, the location fee, and so forth. Um, whenever I generate this, I can generate any number of invoices. So, you know, I can generate 100 at a time or 500 at a time. We found that PDFs, if you're going to print the PDF and feed it into a, you know, a folding machine, they, they generally work better in smaller batches just because, you know, a 500-page PDF can sometimes overload the printer's memory. But the PDFs come out looking like this. I'll click on one that's already been generated. Um, <clears throat> Over here, there we go. So they come out looking, you know, fairly nicely formatted. We use a Microsoft Word template, so the system's already set up to have a customized template for you. And we have a list of 30 or 40 different fields that you can embed in that Word document, like, you know, the uh, billing beginning date and end date, the business information, the list of devices, the number of devices, mailing address, prior balance due. All of those are embeddable. And so you can very easily design your own template to work with CalCats and provide that to us and we'll upload it into the system for you. Ditto for the certificates. Um, that's again another Word template. So if you want particular language on there or you want particular information embedded into that certificate, it's very easy for you to do that. And then along with every batch of invoices we generate, we also generate an Excel summary of that invoice. So this has been particularly useful um, as we went through the process with Alameda. Alameda did all of their device registration invoicing through CalCats this year. And this will give me the list of the businesses and locations that were invoiced as part of this batch. And then the basic invoice details, device amount, device late fee, price verification amount, so forth. But on the second tab, it will give me all the details for every invoice. So this gives me how many devices they had, what the device type was, what the registration fee, the fee per end devices, the fee cap, you know, look all the gory details of the calculation. So, and this is particularly useful when you're running your first round of invoices to make sure that the system calculation is matching up with how you have been doing things in the past. Okay, I think I'll wrap things up there. We do have some um, very, uh, tailored payment entry uh, for batch payments that makes it very easy to enter lots and lots of payments in very rapid succession. Um, and all of these come along with some additional auditing reports that you can use to provide with the deposit bag if you're doing you know, cash and checks um, to reconcile against the bank account and the, the bank deposit statement. Uh, to make sure that you know all the money that was registered in the system actually made it made it into the bank account. 